This is Introduction to Multiphase CT and MRI of the Liver. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and welcome to Radiologist Headquarters. So today I'll be talking about multiphase CT liver protocols. We'll start with the late hepatic arterial phase, the portal venous phase, and then the delayed or equilibrium phase. I'll give you an approach to image interpretation of these multiphase studies, as well as discussing some pitfalls, and then we'll conclude with a basic overview of MRI liver protocols. So a typical multiphase liver CT protocol usually has three or four phases. So starting with the non-contrast phase here, you can see that there's no contrast within the aorta. After we give contrast, the first phase we should see is the late hepatic arterial phase, and that occurs about 35 seconds after the time of contrast injection. During this phase, you'll see the hepatic artery enhancing, denoted by the orange arrow there, and the portal vein, by the blue arrow, should be homogeneously enhancing. After that, we have the portal venous phase, which occurs at about 75 to 80 seconds after contrast injection. You'll still see portal vein enhancement, but then we'll start to see hepatic vein enhancement in this phase, and the parenchyma should also demonstrate more robust enhancement. Uh, finally, we have the delayed or equilibrium phase, which usually starts around 4 to 5 minutes and can continue to 10 minutes. And at this point, contrast starts to leak out of the liver, and everything starts to fade out a bit. Now, the indications for this study are typically to evaluate a liver lesion or mass, and that can be anything like a hemangioma, hepatocellular carcinoma, cholangiocarcinoma. Just insert your favorite OMA. <laughs> There's also some debate as to whether the non-contrast portion of the examination is essential in every study, so you'll see that vary from institution to institution. Hence the triple phase liver CT protocol. Now, you can also do a dual phase or two phase liver CT and that's typically for patients that are having screening for hepatocellular carcinoma, like patients with cirrhosis or hepatitis, and also patients that have abnormal LFTs might benefit from this dual-phase reduced radiation study where you eliminate the non-contrast and the delayed equilibrium phase series. In this way, you're just looking for any abnormal lesion. Now, let's talk a bit more about that late hepatic arterial phase. So this can be done with either an empiric delay of 35 seconds, which is a fixed delay, waiting 35 seconds after the time of contrast injection, or you can do a bolus trigger evaluation similar to what we would do with an angiogram where you inject a small amount of contrast to determine the optimal phase of contrast enhancement. And this is the same as the cortical medullary phase, roughly, as well as the enteric phase, the pancreatic parenchymal phase, and also the phase where you usually see arsiform splenic enhancement, that tiger stripey appearance of the spleen. So it's important to look at these other organs during this phase because you may pick up other abnormalities. And notably, this 35 second delay is similar to the delay that many centers use for a CT contrast chest evaluation. So it's a good idea to look at the liver whenever you're reading a chest CT with contrast because you may be also picking up a late hepatic arterial phase of the liver. Now, on the late hepatic arterial phase, you should again see the hepatic artery and the portal vein enhance, but not the hepatic veins. And you can see those two structures denoted by the arrows. So if you don't see any portal vein, you've scanned too early, meaning if you only see the hepatic artery. And if you see the hepatic veins, then you're too late. And this is crucial. You should always check this on any multiphase liver to ensure that you have an adequate late hepatic arterial phase, regardless of whether you're looking at a CT or MRI. So the order of enhancement is normally hepatic artery, then portal vein, then hepatic veins. And this late hepatic arterial phase, which you can think of as an arterial portal phase, is the best phase to detect hypervascular lesions. So unlike the liver parenchyma, which gets most of its blood supply from the portal vein, hypervascular tumors get most of their blood supply from the hepatic artery. And this is different from the early arterial phase done with a CT angiogram, like a CT dissection study or any other CT angiographic evaluation. And that's, again, because the arterial phase occurs earlier. That's not a late hepatic arterial phase we're talking about. That's a pure arterial phase. And even though it's counterintuitive, this phase is often too early to pick up hypervascular liver lesions. So you want to see that late hepatic arterial phase where you have hepatic artery and portal vein enhancing. So here's an example as to why that difference between the early arterial phase and the late hepatic arterial phase is so crucial. So these two left-hand images show an early arterial phase study. So the aorta is markedly enhancing, and so is the hepatic artery, but you don't see anything in the portal vein. So this phase you would typically see with a true CT angiographic study or a CT dissection study. And you might initially think, oh, it's the arterial phase. This is the best phase to pick up hypervascular liver lesions. And do you see anything in the right hepatic lobe? Well, keep your eye on that because we did another scan a few months later on this patient. And why can we see this hypervascular hepatocellular carcinoma so much better on this study? 
Well, if you look at the portal vein, that's very nicely enhancing along with the hepatic artery. So this is a true late hepatic arterial phase, that arterial portal phase, which is the best phase to pick up hypervascular liver lesions. So again, uh, the early arterial phase is different than the late hepatic arterial phase, especially when you're evaluating for hypervascular liver lesions. Okay, so after that late hepatic arterial phase, the next phase we look at is the portal venous phase. And that has an empiric contrast delay of about 70 to 80 seconds. And again, in this phase, the portal veins will still be enhancing, but now the hepatic veins and the hepatic parenchyma start to really enhance. And it's actually the same phase that most routine CT scans of the abdomen and pelvis are scanned in. And this portal venous phase is actually the best phase to evaluate the liver parenchyma, particularly in the detection of hypovascular lesions, and also to evaluate for lesion washout or capsular enhancement, which is typical for hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, here's an example highlighting that difference between the hepatic arterial phase and portal venous phase in the detection of hepatic lesions. So these left-hand images show the hepatic arterial phase. You can see on that lower image the hepatic artery and the portal vein are enhancing, but you don't see any hepatic vein enhancement. And do you see any liver lesions? Well, when we look at the portal venous phase done soon after, the hepatic veins are now enhancing along with the parenchyma. And then look at all these hypovascular hepatic masses that are very difficult to see on the hepatic arterial phase, even in retrospect. And this is a patient who had lung cancer with hypovascular hepatic metastases. So that portal venous phase is ideal for detection of hypovascular masses. Now, other hypovascular liver metastases that you may see include GI tract and pancreatic tumors. Okay, so everybody loves the portal venous phase for the detection of hypovascular dark masses, but it's still not as good as the late hepatic arterial phase for those hypervascular lesions, and here's an example showing that. So on this right-hand image, we see a portal venous phase with parenchymal liver enhancement as well as hepatic and portal venous phase enhancement. And other than some mild peripheral heterogeneity, you don't really see anything too suspicious in the liver. Uh, you do see an enhancing heterogeneous right adrenal mass and a pancreatic tail peripherally enhancing mass corresponding to metastatic disease in this patient that had had a left nephrectomy for renal cell carcinoma. Now, if we look back at the preceding late hepatic arterial phase image, you can see rather striking metastatic disease throughout the liver as evidenced by these hypervascular lesions corresponding to metastatic renal cell carcinoma. And again, you can see that right adrenal and pancreatic tail metastasis. So this was a patient with hypervascular hepatic metastases secondary to renal cell carcinoma best seen on that late hepatic arterial phase. So Again, the late hepatic phase is great for hypervascular arterially enhancing lesions, whereas the portal venous phase is best for those dark hypovascular hypoenhancing masses. All right, since I showed a case of metastatic renal cell carcinoma to the liver, just to go into a slight tangent, what else can cause hypervascular hepatic metastases? What's your differential diagnosis? So there's a handy mnemonic you can use, MRICT. So M is melanoma, R is renal cell carcinoma, I is islet cell tumors such as pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, C is carcinoid and choriocarcinoma, and T is thyroid. Now, if you really like nuclear medicine, you can use a similar mnemonic, MRCT-PET, whereas M is melanoma, R is renal cell carcinoma, C is choriocarcinoma, T is thyroid, and P is pancreatic and extrapancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, including carcinoid. And the most common you'll see are typically melanoma, renal cell, and carcinoid, as far as hypervascular hepatic metastases. Unfortunately, I don't have a mnemonic for hypovascular liver metastases, but again, it's typically GI tract, pancreas, and sometimes lung. All right, just to summarize the pitfalls you need to avoid, the arterial phase on a CT angiogram like a dissection protocol or AAA evaluation is not the same as the late hepatic arterial phase on a liver protocol. I know I'm obsessing about this, but it's a really important distinction. And again, the hypervascular lesions, you'll see those best on late hepatic arterial phase scans and hypovascular lesions or hypoenhancing lesions best seen on portal venous phase imaging. And you really need to understand this, otherwise you can miss lesions or underestimate the extent of disease or change between examination. Okay, moving to the final phase of the multiphase CT liver is the delayed or equilibrium phase. And that usually starts around four to five minutes and continues until 10 minutes. And contrast is kind of leaking out of the liver during this phase. It's also about the same time that you'll see the early excretory and pilographic phases of the kidneys. So you can see on that lowermost right-hand image, we're starting to see contrast excreted into the collecting system. So when you're looking at a multiphase liver CT, you also want to look at the collecting system to detect any small or subtle areas of possible urothelial carcinoma that might be hiding in the collecting system.
And this delayed phase is really the best phase to evaluate for continued lesion washout and capsular enhancement, which again is typical for hepatocellular carcinoma. But it's also the best phase to detect delayed enhancement of certain tumors. And do you know which two tumors typically have delayed enhancement? Correct, hemangioma and cholangiocarcinoma, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. So these two tumors will tend to show gradual enhancement throughout the time of a multi-phase CT liver study, and it's important to look for lesions such as this on the delayed or equilibrium phase images. Okay, so let's talk about MRI multi-phase liver. So MRI is superior to CT for characterizing liver masses, and that's because CT has better spatial resolution, which is the ability to distinguish between two adjacent structures, but MRI has better contrast resolution, the ability to distinguish differences between similar but not identical tissues. So MRI is better at tissue characterization. When we do a multi-phase MRI of the liver, we get a series of non-contrast images, which typically include T1-weighted in-phase and opposed-phase gradient echo images. Remember, we covered those in the adrenal lecture series, and that's useful in identifying microscopic or intracellular fat, which you'll see with hepatic steatosis, certain subtypes of hepatic adenoma, occasionally with well-differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma, and then rarely from metastases from clear cell renal cell carcinoma. We also get a series of T2-weighted images, and that's helpful to compare liver lesion intensity relative to the spleen. Cysts and hemangiomas tend to be very bright relative to the spleen, whereas other lesions such as focal nodular hyperplasia and hepatocellular carcinoma are often iso-intense or even slightly hypo-intense relative to the spleen. Also, diffusion and ADC sequences are great at detecting restricted diffusion, which can be helpful in characterizing abscesses, which often centrally restrict diffusion, compared to malignancy, which, if rim-enhancing, will often peripherally restrict diffusion due to dense cellularity. And then we acquire post-contrast images, and with MRI, we can obtain many more post-contrast images at different time points compared to CT because there's no ionizing radiation. So a typical sequence may include immediate post-contrast images, one minute, three minute, four minute, five minute, you could go on, <laughs> but it's all without radiation. And then we can also do subtraction images where the post-contrast images are subtracted with the pre-contrast images leaving behind absolute enhancement, which can be helpful in characterizing lesions that are intrinsically T1 bright. So the pre- and post-contrast sequences we get with a multi-phase liver MRI are a special type of sequence known as a spoiled 3D gradient echo variant with fat saturation. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but spoiling is just a method in which any residual transverse magnetization, which is responsible for T2 signal, is destroyed or canceled out before the next radiofrequency pulse is applied. So that's a great way to make a T1 sequence, which is what these sequences are. So for every vendor, Unfortunately, this special sequence has a different name. So for Siemens, it's known as a Vibe. For GE, it's a Fame or a Lava. For Philips, it's a Thrive. So we could go on, but just know that these are all similar sequences. They're all spoiled 3D gradient echo variants with fat saturation. So they're T1 sequences with fat saturation. Okay, that was too many words. Let's look at some images here. <laughs> so here's a typical T1 3D gradient echo fat suppressed image. And this is how it would look without contrast. So you can see that the portal vein with the blue arrow there is non-enhancing. It's hypo-intense. And so is the hepatic vein there with the green arrow. And the surrounding subcutaneous fat is dark because fat is usually bright on T1, but it's being suppressed. So that's why the signal is dark. And then when we give contrast, we have first have the late hepatic arterial phase, just like on CT scan. And this is determined typically by a test contrast bolus on MRI. And here you can see that the hepatic artery is enhancing by the orange arrow, as well as the portal vein there by the blue arrow. But notice that the hepatic veins are not yet enhancing. So it's just like CT. The hepatic artery and the portal veins are enhancing, but not the hepatic vein yet. Then subsequently, we get the portal venous phase, where the portal vein's enhancing, and now the hepatic veins are diffusely enhancing. And the parenchyma is also much brighter than on that late hepatic arterial phase. And then we start to get a series of delayed or equilibrium phases that can continue on as contrast leaks out of the liver, and you can see everything's becoming slightly diminished in signal. So let's just compare that a bit further, the late hepatic arterial phase and the portal venous phase on MRI. So here on the late hepatic arterial phase, the green arrow is showing a non-enhancing middle hepatic vein, but then we see that enhancing nicely on the subsequent portal venous phase at the same level. Here again in the late hepatic arterial phase, the portal vein's enhancing with the blue arrow, and the hepatic veins are not enhancing. But then the portal venous phase shows that those hepatic veins are enhancing along with the portal vein. Portal vein is the blue arrow. And notice too on that late hepatic arterial phase, the pancreas is very nicely enhancing, and we have the arciform or tiger stripe appearance of the spleen. 
because remember those phases occur around the same time as that late hepatic arterial phase. Here's just another image of the late hepatic arterial phase showing that the portal vein is enhancing there with the blue arrow and the hepatic veins are not with the green arrows. And then what phase is that that we're looking at in the kidney with the orange arrow? Right, that's the cortical medullary phase, which also occurs around the same time as the late hepatic arterial phase, just like on CT scan. And then finally, we have this portal venous phase image showing that the hepatic veins are now enhancing, and the hepatic parenchyma is also very diffusely enhancing. You can see that the portal veins are still faintly visible as well. And what phase is the kidney in now? Right, it's the nephrographic phase. And that's the best phase to detect renal masses because the renal parenchyma is diffusely enhancing. All right, that's it for Introduction to Multiphase CT and MRI of the Liver. Hey, if you enjoyed this lecture, you could subscribe to Radiologist Headquarters on Apple Podcasts and YouTube. Hey, why not leave a review or a comment while you're there? <laughs> Visit us at radiologisthq.com for additional info and to follow us on social media. Thanks and have a great day.